Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. And today I'm going. <laughs> no, you're stuck with me. G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a bloodied gorse rifle with bullets exploding for area damage. So we all know the drill by now. Bladed explosive means lots and lots of damage when we combine that with adrenal reaction, rifleman perks, any other conceivable thing to actually boost this thing's damage. So I'm going to be interested to see how far we can push this gorse rifle because honestly, these things aren't great. I find rifleman weapons too slow and unwieldy to use, you know, in close quarter situations like I use with, you know, automatic commando weapons. So that is why I don't ever use the ones that I can turn automatic as rifleman, unless it's instigating, because I want to make the best use out of that particular legendary effect. But I digress. So, here we've got our gorse rifle prime capacitors for even more damage, doing 210 base, which is pretty damn solid, yes. True barrel and true stock for hip fire accuracy, medium scope for sniping, and suppressor for stealth purposes. Um, pretty self-explanatory there if you've been watching the channel for a while. Let's go ahead and upgrade this thing with some perks. Obviously, it is a rifleman weapon because it is not automatic, and we'll be chucking on three of those. Now, concentrated fire is a little bit of a um, thing that I have there for now, but honestly, this thing and VATS isn't great, and we'll get to that hopefully a little bit later if I remember, but chucking on Demo Expert will allow us to boost our damage a little bit more too. And of course, bloody mess goes on. There it is. And with all of those things applied, 372 damage. But again, that is the tip of the iceberg. We've still got a whole lot of uh, bloody defect to gain and adrenal reaction to gain on top of that. So yeah, at 372 already, that's pretty solid, but we can do better. Okay, so some life-threatening doses of radiation later. We're sitting just under Nerd Rage Threshold. There are all my buffs, by the way. Ooh, lots of buffs. And... 1153 damage, which is probably enough to take Swan's head off in a few shots, so that's pretty good, I guess. Okay, so we're going to be starting off with the ghouls, but I know taking on these guys at this radiation level, without some significant radiation protection, is a big old dumb idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step into my suit of power armor, and then after that I'm going to unequip and then re-equip my gun to make sure we actually get its inherent bonuses because power armor seems to break that and Bethesda that's been in the game for ages now and Bethesda haven't bothered fixing it but I'm pretty sure at this point we can probably just tap we could, we could probably just tap away and we'll do enough damage to kill these guys completely uncharged which is what I'm seeing here and with that true barrel and true stock um, no need to aim down sight, so we've got a scope for, you know, sniping, but if we're in close quarters, we can rely on this thing's hip fire, which is why I always choose the true, um, parts on these particular weapons, so, uh, we'll just hop up here, see if we can scope out any more ghoulies that I may have missed. Nope. Now, I'm sneaking around in power armor, which seems counterintuitive, but, um, as Todd Howard puts it, uh, it just works, and it works it does. Have I been detected yet? No. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got enough points in strength to actually um, make use out of something like... I just triggered that trap. Good for me. Yes, unfortunately, <laughs> when we get ourselves in a situation where we're detected, it's going to be open season on winter because she ain't got a lot of HP because she got to endurance. And going back into sneaking is probably not an option. I mean, I'll give it a crack. But, <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. So here's where we see the limitations of this thing with its uh, six rounds. And I'm going to try to use this thing a little bit in vats and take you out, mate. Now, I think I've noted in the past, at least mentally noted, not actually talked about it, that um, the shot is calculated when you actually start charging the um, barrel, right? So if you're, you if you charge the barrel in advance of an attack, right, and you've charged it at like 33% and you wait for them to get closer, I'm pretty sure that shot is always going to be locked at whatever percentage that thing was. And you'll find a lot of 95% shots missing this way. Also, the uh, Gorse Rifle has a tendency to deprime itself, but um, honestly, I've just been tapping the trigger the whole time, so I, wouldn't, I didn't have to actually deal with any of that. And of course, against these squishy-ass ghouls, we'll have no trouble. Oh, he dropped a Stealth Boy Mark III. There you go. Yes, against these guys, you don't need to charge it up because they're weak and squishy anyway, and we've already got enough of that, you know, bloody damage to make this thing work. So taking a look at this thing damage now, 1572, that is definitely what you want out of a gorse rifle for sure. And since we're not firing all that much either, the condition bar is going to go down pretty low despite it not being buffed by anything like gunsmith, which is 
damn solid indeed. Also, we look fucking badass using a gorse rifle and power armor. Just take it in for a moment. Hmm, yes. But like always, sometimes the job is not totally done, so what we must do is finish off the rest, and bash damage, no. Even in power armor, my bash damage is just fucking worthless. And I'm- oh wait, I've also disabled serendipity by jumping in power armor too, and he give, gave me two legendaries. Okay, whatever. I'll take it. Anyways, we'll have one last quick sweep of the bottom here, make sure- None of the other ghouls have been missed. No, I just think it was the lads in that other room. Oh, wait, no, there's this fellow, too. He's also legendary, so good on him for that. Plenty of script for me next time I pass by one of those rip-off machines, that's for sure. I'll pinch those two, because they're worth a bit. Oh, look out. Not only is there a radiation storm, which is once in a blue moon, but Swan is a three-star legendary. That's, I think, the first time. So, ooh, let's see what he's got for us today. It's a blue moon rarity thing on a gold moon rarity thing. What does that give you? A platinum moon? And 3200 damage on him and not quite a kill. But we can easily follow it up and get a little bit more. And he is dead in two shots. Pretty damn efficient. And this is what he gave us. Mm-hmm. Point taken, Swan. Okay, time for a spot of good old-fashioned sniping. Not sure if you can really call it sniping from over here, but headshots or nothing. We only need six... Hey, wait, the queen's already out. Okay, cool. At least we don't have to waste a plasma grenade waking a dumbass up. Now, if you could just stop lagging for a second so I could lead you properly, that would be good. But, uh, oh well, we can't have everything, can we? There's a headshot doing less damage than I was doing against the other dudes. Oh no, we're in danger now. Allow me to go back into caution, please. There we go. So the Queen's just sitting there doing sweet fuck all, and ooh, okay, that was a damage drop off and a half. But then she forgot I was there. I must have shot her with the fucking the legendary effect that gives her Alzheimer's or something. Oi, turn to me. Give me your attention. No? Fine, I'll just shoot you in the arm. Well, it was an easy enough victory as it was, so sure. Whatever. And yeah. Damage is 60%. We've already seen this, but again, 1572. Flex. Alrighty, so what have we got at the train yard smash today? It appears to be gun zombies, and uh, bless their little cotton socks, I've got a prime gorse rifle. You know, and it's bloody and explosive, so it'll be doing more damage than it would, you know, if it wasn't doing that. And not only because it increases the base damage of it, it's because it does more damage to these bastards. So, you know, just casually hitting them for 4,400 points, that's pretty good. Now, if I put my Gorse Rifle away, I should deprime it. Yes, I remember doing that in Fallout 4 back when the Gorse Rifle was better. See, I do like the Gorse Rifle a lot better in Fallout... Oh, that explosive damage too. 380? Nice. That's, that's solid explosive damage right there. But yes, um, the reason I do like this thing better is because VATS in this game has changed a little bit. And I'll try to demonstrate what I was talking about earlier here, because that guy is very, very far away. So if we happen to get ourselves a shot, you know, at 15% and charge it up, maybe it won't hit. So we'll have to find old mate again since he fucking ran off. Where'd you go, boy? There you are. Alright, so our perception is really high right now, so... <laughs> Um, thanks Unyielding, you're making it hard to prove my point here. Alright, now I'm charging it up at 50%, and I'm gonna creep right up to him. It's a 50-50 shot, so we've got a decent chance of hitting this, but at now it is at 95. Okay, that was a hit, but ooh, 8300 damage too. <laughs> That'll do you in, mate. Alright, note that ghoul over there. 27% when we first charge this thing up. No crit has been activated, so that's not going to, you know, factor into our damage here. And as we creep up to it, we'll get into the 95% range, and then... Miss. Yes, I get that you can miss those 92% shots, but that, for all intents and purposes, should have been a hit. So, you know, when you first start charging the thing is when you're gonna get that accuracy from. It's gonna be on that shot, which is a real problem for a gorse rifle, I think. Alrighty, so here's our chance to do a little bit of uh, cheeky sneak attack criticals to a landed scorch base, see if we can't one-shot him. And if we can, it's going to be hilarious. 
but let's just creep up nice and slowly, make sure we aren't spotted by any potential other gun zombies around me, and once we're in range, you may fire when ready. 6200 damage, instantly wrecked. Nice. Alrighty, we're not stopping there when it comes to Scorch Beast fighting, so I'm going to go ahead and take out this one from very impressive range, mind you. We might have been penalized for our range there, so we, we probably could have done that even quicker, or at least it did even more damage to that particular Scorch Beast, but doesn't really matter. This thing is definitely a sniper rifle type weapon, so that is what we'll use it for. Although we're limited in range in some respects there, I think. I'm pretty sure I, hit, I, were to, I would have hit him there because it is a hit scan weapon. It's going exactly where you bloody point the thing, but didn't hit. And I'm pretty sure that was a nut shot to out insult to injury. So in terms of just extreme damage against one singular target when it comes to, you know, scorched creatures, and I'm just going to activate that critical just to get that guaranteed hit. Again, hitting him for... <laughs> oh, hang on. Here's one. A little bit of adrenaline along with this as well. 8141 damage. Impressive damage indeed. And I'm finally glad we got to insta kill that one there. And just, you know, to make sure we really kill them, we're just gonna hit these guys for <laughs> a couple of thousand damage each. You're dead. And that Scorch Beast over there, he's apparently he's given me the stink eye because he's, he's aggroed to me. Okay, as it turns out, he's preoccupied with fighting something else. What exactly is it? I'm thinking it's robots, actually. I saw Mr. Gutsy over there, and they're not nothing, and that was a complete miss because I had the shot charge before I entered that. So you see why it's not as great as a weapon that it was back in Fallout 4? Because you, you just charge the thing right up. Like, in VATS, the thing was fully charged, so you could, you know, compared to real time, get more kills with it than you could... Um, ever do with just regular charging up bullets, and yep, we're done here. Okay, let's finish this off with a little bit of Mutie's Plaza, shall we? And judging by the kind of damage we were getting before on these guys, I don't think we'll struggle whatsoever. In fact, I could probably kill a lot of them just standing right here, except for, you know, that one. He's he's covered behind something, but that's okay. We can simply move over here. And since we're not using VATS, I could switch over to long shot. I, I think that's what that thing's called, where you get more range if you scope down your uh, sights, because VATS at this range would probably be pretty ineffective. Unless you get, you know... Um, splash damage enough to actually kill the guys like that. And I think what they did with explosive weapons in Fallout 76 is rather good because it, obviously, you know, scaling off your base damage, it means that not only high rate of fires are actually of great benefit to explosive, right? So we're getting 279 explosive damage out of our shots, which is excellent because um, I'm pretty sure we're getting about 33 when we got our... Um, Furious explosive um, machine gun all going, so maybe that's also considering sneak attack criticals, but even still, that is very, very solid explosive damage, so impressed with this gorse rifle again. Hang on, we've already seen the damage, haven't we? Oh, it's up to 1615 now. I must have another threshold of adrenal reaction or blade unlocked for that. Okay, this is going to be no scopes only. Starting from now, obviously, yes. So, hitting these guys for 35k. I wonder if I hit him in the head. It will, it was just with the tap. Okay, even with the tap, it's going to one-tap him there. And that one seemed to be... Okay, maybe it was because it was a headshot doing double damage. But yeah, if we just tap him in the head like normal, you know, it kills them. But, you know, without those headshots, it's still killing them there. So, incredibly powerful. You don't even have to charge this up, which is huge for its rate of fire. Yes, that's good. Okay, so now that we know this thing does like 8,000 damage against regular old Scorch Beasts, 281, 288, 277. You see why I don't like this event? She's needlessly bullet spongy for no fucking good reason. And I know I said that I wasn't going to do this shit again, and I'm begrudgingly doing it just to show this off. So, you know, at least I'm making a... I, I think I'm making a mark in that... Um health bar of hers. I'm just going to continue shooting it in the ass and getting the occasional headshot, which means I shot right through the fucking thing, which is kind of nice, I guess. Ah, see, sneak attack criticals, getting 462 damage. 
If I switch over to my unspecked bloodied handmade, though, let me just let me just whip that out for a second. We can get that damage a lot quicker. Yes. All right. Run that mag dry. I think you get the point here. So I'm probably gonna speed this up, I guess. Okay, so reason number two that I hate this Scorch Beast fight the most is that I'm being robbed of sneak attack criticals here. If you're watching closely, I'm getting 1600 hits per shot, but as you can see, as soon as I land that hit, um, it's aggroed because all of these fucking idiots are running up and hitting it, right? Drawing its aggro, so I am being robbed so much damage here. I can solo a Scorch Beast Queen with this thing, and I know it, but there we go. Sorry, it's a bit windy outside. Hopefully you can't hear that. But, yep, yeah, we're done with this dumb thing. And, ooh, we got an Executioner's Death Tambo. Is it swing speed? It is not. Okay, time to get out. I'm going to cut my losses and uh, get out here before I get killed and some fucker pinches my shit. Say goodnight, smiley boy. Okay, going back to the Super Mutants now, and with the knowledge that we can just tap the trigger for a kill, um, I'm going to miss every single shot in my magazine. No, we can just easily kill everything, even without that 37 times sneak attack bonus. We've just, we're just playing during the daytime now, had to server hop a little bit to actually get here. But yep, even without that extra uh, sneak attack bonus, we can do this rather easily, and we're still hitting for 342 explosive damage, which is very, very nice indeed. So, enough, we could just shoot him. I mean, if we actually get those explosions to trigger, we can actually just shoot them at the ground, at their legs or something. I mean, it's an expensive round to fire just to be pissing it away at, you know, hitting their legs with explosive damage, but, you know, it's an option, I suppose. And who have we got in here? I'm just gonna get a cheeky little shot on you, or shoot between you. That's for intimidation. So was that. But that one got it. And we'll quickly finish off Old Maid in there too. Now we can move on to this room. Ironically, if he just had a stood there, he would have prolonged his life. So, um, yeah. So no problem taking out these super mutants. Don't have to charge it up at all, which is really good. And as long as we get the sneak attack criticals... Why do I keep missing? I shouldn't keep missing like this. I'm a scrub. Also, did anyone see someone... Okay, it was just the gardener checking on his plants. At least the super mutants have a passion outside of killing and pillaging and looting. They they enjoy gardening. Let, let a little, little known fact there. That's nice. Wholesome fact for the day that super mutants enjoy a little bit of gardening. They are... They plant their crops of mute fruits to feed the starving super mutant armies for years. And I, I, I don't know what the gore bags are for then. I guess that's for snacks. Instead of going into the the pantry or the, the cupboard or the fridge, you just go over to the, your nearest gore bag and you know grab out some intestine and use it as noodles or something. I don't know. All I do know about super mutants though is they're fun to shoot at and they have... A tendency to scream even post-mortem, which is interesting. And a nice little legendary there. He's given us an exterminator's fire axe. Yes, exterminators. I had to check whether that was executioners or not. And according to that, that was a headshot. Alright, game, whatever whatever floats your boat. Get a nice little no scope on him. See, this is why I do like the true barrel and true stock, because you can easily just, you know. Just no scope everybody at the top of a trigger here. It's like a hunting rifle, but it's better. You can fire it a lot faster than a hunting rifle. In fact, you know, in every conceivable way, this thing is better than a hunting rifle, despite its, you know, drawbacks and vats, which we examined earlier. But, you know, with damage like this, is it's really what you want to have out of a gorse rifle, because the shots, if you want to charge them up, it, they're going to be slow. So having a super high damaging gorse rifle is basically what you want. 
I had an instigating one once that was pretty damn good. We had to charge it up, but the sneak attack criticals helped us out as well. We just quickly dodge this guy and then get killed because we, we suck, basically. Another big shame of the Gorse Rifle in Fallout 76 is its ammo capacity has been cut by more than half if you've got the thing, you know, fully ammo kitted up. And then in Fallout 4, you can get up to 20 bullets in it at once. Meanwhile, the maximum you can get, and uh, uh, how much I've ever seen, and thank god I can cancel those reloads because that was a really bad place to, you know, stop there. And already again, these super mutants are on top of me, so maybe I should actually worry about sneaking than running my mouth. But, you know, having less bullets in my mag to kill stuff with is. it, it kind of sucks, you know? Alright, back into caution now. And we'll try to keep it that way for ease of killing. The thing is too damn accurate. I'm not focusing enough. I'm just saying, yep, send it. Whereas I should actually be focusing on where I'm aiming. And that's why I don't want to aim down sights too much in close quarters. Because not only do I get a close-up with the scopes, but... um, Well, how are you this daft? I'm right here. I'm right here. Okay. That was a... Uh, interesting experience to have, but, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, having that scope on it all. I've, I've gone over this already too many times, but still, we can get a nice finish here, probably. We're just gonna have to charge up our last bullets because it seems that stealth is not really working for us now, and we're pretty much finished here. So, there you have it. That was a bloodied explosive gorse rifle, and it has been a blast to use, and I'm finally happy to say that I've got a decent gorse rifle, you know, in my inventory for using, because, you know, it used to be TSE, but then they changed a few things here and there, and fuck off, wind. Come on. I'm trying to commentate here. I'm trying to record. But yep, post the uh, TSC nerfing patch, I've been really looking out for a decent gorse rifle. I thought that two shot or instigating would be, but no, we need something bloody and explosive just to add that extra damage on to have a really actually good gorse rifle. If you'd like to see this thing in your game, throw as many crip as you can at Murmur, even if it's a two star just to get the exact roll that I've got here, will do you good enough, but something else like Wayless would be great because gorse rifles are heavy, reducing that weight somewhat would be nice to, you know, so you can carry this thing around, so if everyone is switched to sniping, then this will be a thing, so, you know, once we get mod support, I know what I'm putting on this tertiary legendary effect, and I will make a mod that allows you to attach legendaries onto stuff, so we can just sidestep all the grind and, you know, get to soloing Scorch Beast Queens on our own with private servers, oh, those will be the days. Thank you very much for watching.